Lots of people feel nostalgic for their childhood. They want to go back to the days of wonder and fun, where every day was both simple but full of amazing learning. Every year, to try to recapture those days, around 64% of adults once again try suckling on their mother's teeth. Overwhelmingly, they fail to capture the magic. It's basically the same thing, but something just feels slightly off. That's how I feel about the Insane Trilogy. Now, going into this, I'm going to assume you have a working knowledge of the original three Crash Bandicoot games, as I'm going to be focusing on the changes this remake brings. If you don't know about those games, you should definitely check out this video, the link for which is in the description. It doesn't explain Crash Bandicoot at all, but I don't have a video which does that, and I'd still like to up my view count. Anyway, on to the changes. The updated visuals are fantastic. Not only does it look great, they've managed to remain mostly faithful to the originals while adding little bits of flair, like the faces on these blobs, as well as making some visual cues clearer, like changing the colour of these plants which close on a timer rather than just changing their leaves. However, it is running at 30 frames a second, which is a bit of a disappointment really. I've seen people defending this by pointing out the originals also ran at 30, but I kind of think the whole idea of remaking them was so they could improve on them. I would much rather it looked a little rougher but ran at 60, because honestly, not only does 30 feel a lot worse, but if you develop a game that runs at 30 frames a second, Total Biscuit will visit you, and it won't be pleasant. I'm just trying to warn you. I once went for a game of bowling with my friends, and I was having a great time, but as soon as I'd thrown my last ball, Total Biscuit burst in, looked up at the scoreboard and said, Pah! 10 frames in like 30 minutes, peasant! And Pepper sprayed me right in the face. He really takes this stuff seriously. There are now time trials in all three games, with online leaderboards to boot. This is a great addition, and if nothing else, adds a little bit more to do. They even added sprinting in Crash 2, which makes rushing through levels a lot more interesting, and changes up how you play that game post-completion compared to 20 years ago. They unfortunately didn't add the sprint to Crash 1 though. I kinda get that, there's much more platforming between small platforms in 1, but still, it would've been nice to have it to try and really push time trials. Even if you're not gonna use it most of the time, it's nice to have it for when you do. You might be a committed wiper, but it's still nice to have a bidet for the one time you ordered a Vindaloo. Even so, being able to sprint in 2 is a good addition and I don't want to take away from that. You can also play as Coco now for most of the levels. She plays exactly the same as Crash, but she has a lot of her own animations and they've done a decent job at giving her a bit of her own personality. The reasoning given for her being on adventures she wasn't actually present for is that she's using a time machine to jump back into the past and help Crash out. This either means she's needlessly risking her own life or that she comes from a timeline where Crash failed and the world was enslaved by evil. A bit of a depressing explanation really. I would have just accepted it as a retelling. When I play as Luigi, they don't have to tell me he's there because Mario is lying crippled at the bottom of a pit. Oh, they've also added hints to the loading screens. That's good or bad depending on your perspective, and personally I wish I could turn them off, but I do love this particular one, saying you need a perfect run up to a death platform. Because they mean that you need to not die at all until the skull root platform, but the way they've written it could be misread as meaning you need to get a really good run up to the platform. So I hope there's lots of people out there who have jumped to their death over and over again trying to get the perfect run up. It reminds me of this one time, I was going through a bit of a dry spell when I saw an advert online for some really kinky sex. Plus, the first session was free. It sounded super freaky, and I was hugely excited. I couldn't wait to get up close and personal with this psycho analyst. But then when I got there, it was really weird. All they wanted to do was talk about my childhood, and I just left crying. And, you know... I'm not saying I wouldn't have been crying after if I'd had sex instead, but it just wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Anyway, the problem with the Insane Trilogy is that most of these improvements are additions. They've added time trials and leaderboards, added sprinting, added Coco as a playable character, but they haven't improved sections that were bad almost 20 years ago. Okay, I'm talking about the Crash Free Vehicle sections. They're back and they're still utter shite. They're clunky and repetitive, with little added in subsequent levels of the same type. Crash Bandicoot didn't need these sections even back then, but I can sort of see why they were added. Most people associate the word crash with a vehicle colliding into something, which Crash Bandicoot, at the time, had none of. And they didn't want a sperm whale situation on their hands. You see, the sperm whale got its name because people mistakenly believed that a sperm whale's head was full of semen. In reality, its head contains no semen. Despite this, the name stuck, and the substance its head is filled with, despite containing no cum at all, is still called spermaceti. This bullying has caused a lot of distress in the sperm whale community, getting so bad that many scientists suggested swapping the name sperm whale around with the name Jeremy Kyle, because his head actually is full of cum. Of course, this push to rename the sperm whale scared Naughty Dog, and they quickly added these levels to the game so there would be vehicle crashes in there. Less scientists rally to swap the name Crash Bandicoot with the name Richard Hammond, because he actually does crash cars. So I understand why they added them back, but they didn't come out great. 
This was an opportunity to actually make them fun, and they missed it. In fact, they took the one path that guaranteed they still suck. I think it would be better if they'd tried and failed to improve them, rather than just not trying at all. If I was remaking wasps, I wouldn't leave the parts people hate untouched just because that's how wasps were before. I'd leave the stinger there to try to appeal to fans of the old wasps, but I'd change them so they'd administer heroin instead of venom to make it more fun for the people who didn't like the old wasps. Gone would be the days of, man, I hate wasps. Enter the days of, I love wasps. I'm addicted to wasps. Wasps 2.0, your excuse when you fail your drugs test. Now, remaking wasps probably isn't actually worth the risk of causing a heroin epidemic, but remaking unenjoyable sections of a game probably is worth the risk of making them unenjoyable in a different way, because you have the chance to vastly improve them and bring them up to the same level of quality as the rest of your product. There are also all sorts of really little changes I personally don't like, but I might be on the minority on. They're not issues, they just irk me slightly. For example, you now can't move when being shrunk to death, the bear now makes a whoosh sound when you speed up, Uka Ruka is on every game over screen despite being locked up until the third game, and Cortex is yellow rather than skin colour now, which I think is fine, but he's skin colour when he's a baby for some reason? That one might even be a reference to how he was in past games, it just strikes me as odd. There's a bunch of these types of differences, but they're tiny changes and I can't expect them to tailor the game to just me, so they're fair enough. Most people might like them. You know, a fair few people might see my videos, so I wouldn't include sections trying to make it look like I'm in danger with the sole purpose of scaring my mum. Even though I'd find that funny, there are others to think about, and most people watching won't care if they think I might get hurt. Really, what it comes down to is thinking about all the different options people- Most importantly, sorry. It's okay. Tiny changes and a few vehicle sections aren't massive complaints, plus they have added some great stuff to games I already loved. So back to the start, what's bothering me about the Insane Trilogy? Well, jumps are different. Now I'm not as angry about this as some people are, in fact I don't even dislike the new jumping, it's just not how it was before, and I think that's an issue for a remaster of a platformer. There's some things you just shouldn't mess with. If you remade Mario but made Princess Peach and Mireille Eel in the sock who screams a wooga, it wouldn't be inherently worse, it's just unnecessarily different. Why change something people already liked? I'll accept that Crash 1 didn't feel the best to control, but that always seemed to me to be a problem with responsiveness, not that the jump was bad in and of itself. They've changed a fundamental part of these games, and I don't think anybody wanted that. If this was a new Crash game with new levels, I'd have no qualms with the jump in. It's fine to be honest, it's a lot of fun. A little hard in places, but never unfairly so. But this is a remake, and ideally it could have completely replaced those old games for me, which it can't do when it simply feels different to play. That's why I feel conflicted. But don't let disappointment be the main takeaway of this video. The main takeaway should be that I love this game. It's awesome and I very much encourage you to play it. It looks great, the updated music sounds amazing, it's a massive amount of fun, the additions they've made make sense and add longevity, and I think I'll be going back to it a lot. Especially if you don't care about the old jumping, or if you didn't play the originals, I'm sure you'll have an uninhibited blast. I'm very happy Crash has returned, and I really hope a new game with all new levels is coming. That'll be the true test of whether the series can not only come back, but keep moving forward. I also love how they have Crash getting crystals and gems from his ears and mouth just so you absolutely know he's pulling these ones from his ass. That's the best bit. <laughs>